half the country right now is depressed, thinks that, you know, Hitler is in charge. The other half of the country feels pretty good. Like, hey, we're going to turn this ship around. Um, We're about January 20th, I think, in January. Sometime it's going to kick off. We're about to enter a global war, a real war. But most of the soldiers won't have any idea that they're fighting it. They already don't know. We're in a propaganda war right now. A society that doesn't value or understand the truth can't be free uh, because freedom and truth are forever linked. That's a quote from the book. Now, I don't want the government telling us what's true and what's misinformation. That's our job, not their job. Can't be their job. But it is changing in this rapidly changing world. And to inform yourself, that's not easy. Deep fakes now abound in our digital society, and soon you will not be able to trust your own eyes or your ears. You will swear that's true. But it's not all bad news. The propaganda machine just suffered a critical blow with Trump's victory. Now we have the opportunity to take it down once and for all. With me today is the co-author of Propaganda Wars. Together, he and I will equip you to navigate the murky waters of misinformation leading up to Trump's uh, inauguration. More importantly, if you read this book and you follow some easy steps, this is more of a how-to book or how I've done it for 25 years. How do we know the difference between what's fake and what's real? We're going to teach you today how to spot a fake um and take you through this war a propaganda war welcome to the podcast the founder of heartland socialism research center and my co-author of propaganda wars justin haskins but before we get to uh justin let me tell you about relief factor every day we each get older and uh, depending on how old you are uh it things change your body is like ow where it never was ow before. You just got up and went through it and it wasn't a problem. Now, uh, at least with me, I have, I have, I had such horrible pain in my hands and I tried everything I couldn't get out of pain. Nothing would break the back of it until my wife said to me, try relief factor. I didn't think it would work. It's hundred percent drug free. It's a supplement. Um, you know, I didn't believe in supplements, <laughs> but uh, it, it doesn't just help Short term, this is something you take every day, and it's a formula of natural ingredients that support your own body's response to inflammation. And that's what most of our pain and most of our disease comes from inflammation. 70% of the people who try Relief Factor for three weeks go on to order more. Will you try their three-week quick start? It's $19.95. It's less than a dollar a day. Try it. Take it for three weeks as directed. See if it doesn't turn the clock back on your pain. Visit relieffactor.com or call 800 the number 4 relief. That's 800 4 relief. Justin, how are you? I'm great. So, when we put this book out, I was kind of in a dark place. I think you were in a dark place. Um, and it's, it's shockingly not a dark book. No. Um, it just lays out what the individual has to do right. um, to be able to navigate through, you know, what's coming no matter who won. Correct. We feel pretty good at the time of this conversation. We're feeling good. Everybody, you know, everybody on our side is like, oh, you know, this is going great. You know, Joe Biden just said it's going to be an easy transition right. and he's got big plans and he's going to do them. Uh, they're not just going to roll over. No. So while it may feel good now, depending on when you're watching this, uh, it might not feel really good after January 20th. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the biggest problem that we're going to have over the next couple of years is that Trump is 
taking it seriously, his promise mm-hmm. to destroy the deep state. Mm-hmm. He really wants to do it, actually. This isn't oh, one no. of those oh, political no. promises that people make and then they don't follow through. No, he knows it. He knows. And we're seeing this with some of his early appointment picks. It's pretty clear the goal here is going to be to aggressively go after the deep state. Well, that's great. I hate the deep state. The deep yeah. state's terrible. It's awful. It is destroying our country. It is eliminating fruit. We need to get rid of it. But... The deep state isn't going to just die on its own, just sit there and say, okay, I guess it's over for us. They won an election. Elections have consequences. We're going to go home now. Yeah. No, no. (laughs) No. No. No, They've been doing this for a hundred years. That's right. And they have destroyed people before. Yeah. And they will destroy people again if given the chance. And they are, they are not going to go quietly into the night. Okay. So, so let me start jumping off of that. Let me start with the mainstream media. Mainstream media was the biggest, besides uh, Kamala, was the biggest loser of the election. Oh, yeah. Okay? With all of their propaganda, with everything that they did, I mean, they were selling her like like <laughs> nobody's business. Yeah. They completely altered who she was. They, they, they took th- things that they had written about her off their own websites, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then... Trump goes on Joe Rogan, gets 100 million people watching, which is about four times as much that of anybody watching in the debates and about a million times more than Kamala had online. Or, I mean, 99 million more than yeah. what Kamala had. Um, this is this was a repudiation of the mainstream media. And they're all freaking out now. But I don't think they really get you're irrelevant yeah. now irrelevant right correct oh 100 percent. they are by far the biggest loser if if you think about um what this if you think of the election as a test case for what the media can do this is very clear over the past what 10 years the top priority at every major media outlet in America was to destroy one person. Mm -hmm. The whole goal for the last, say, six years was to keep that one person from being president again. And not just to talk, you know, we go into this in the book. It's not just the media or the American government. It's five eyes. It's the entire planet. Right. Every spy agency, every government head, every government Look at the government of England coming over here trying to help Kamala win. That's right. I mean, I've never seen anything like this on planet Earth. No. And they lost. They lost. And that and that is the most incredible part of the whole story. If you can't destroy one person when you're aligned with all of the powerful interests from the biggest banks and the biggest forces on Wall Street, like BlackRock and all of these people, the Great Reset Crowd, the World Economic Forum, the European Union, you have all of these powerful forces all working together to stop one person from becoming president, and they can't do it. They tried to put him in jail. They convicted him of 34 felonies. They still couldn't stop him from winning. If you can't do that, you are dead or almost dead. Now, what scares me about this, what scares me is when you put something in, when you put a dog in the corner, okay, when you corner an animal, Mm -hmm. what happens when they feel like their existence is is on the verge of ending? Oh, they come out. They come. They have because they have nothing to lose now. And that's where they are. And so what's so important about this book, it's unlike all the other books that we've done together where we're talking about issues and topics, important things. We do that in this book too. Things that people haven't heard of like the Great Reset and ESG and all of these things we've covered in the past. But what makes this book special was we didn't want to just talk about problems. We wanted to give people the ability to become part of the solution yeah, and to fight is, back against it. Be prepared for what's coming. Yeah, because this this is... We're at a a fork in the road right now. And with so many things, um, when it comes to the direction of the country, we just made a giant fork in the road. And the road that we're now on is the exact negative of the other. This one will save Western civilization. If Donald Trump can get done what he needs to get done, which includes the destruction of the WEF, maybe even the destruction of NATO or the UN, 
um, the reversal of this mass immigration into the into the uh, West. If he can get this done, it not just saves America, but it saves Europe. It resets everything. That's it's right. a great reset, um, except this time it's not resetting it into something new. It's turning the machine on and off yeah. and rebooting back to factory settings. Yeah. Um, uh, so everything on the planet is at stake. That's right. And I think people can be very overwhelmed by what is coming. But let's stay on the mainstream media. Right now, they are... I mean, I think MSNBC is up for sale or about to be up for sale. <laughs> I heard that, yeah. CNN is, you know, uh, releasing stuff about Anderson Cooper makes $20 million a year and going to have to take some cuts because that ain't, that ain't happening. Yep. I mean, they're, they are about to go in a fire sale themselves. Somebody asked me, Glenn, what would CNN have to do to get you to believe them again? <laughs> what, could they do anything for you? Oh boy, they'd have to fire a lot of people and hire a lot of people who I already trust. And I don't know if that and that doesn't I don't seem know that likely. Would, but I mean, it would that's have what to be. It, you don't. You build that trust over decades. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You right. can blow it overnight. Yep. But it takes decades to build that. That's right. There's. I mean, they would have to start by firing Christian Anampour <laughs> for me. To even pay attention to it. Yeah. So let's look at the mainstream media. They haven't learned a lesson. They're saying the same thing they did in 16. You know, oh, it's them. They did this and this and this. But, well, maybe we should have some more conservative voices on. That's not going to change anything. No. Okay? There's no self-reflection. So when the, the industrial complex comes back now and says... Russia, 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 2.0. Right. How is that going to be effective? Oh, There's okay. So I think the first step to all of this is to understand that going back, um, going back at least to early 2024, we've seen the playbook start to be rolled out. Uh, the... There, there were all these war games that were being hosted. There were meetings and events all centered around this idea of another Russian collusion, Russian involvement in the election, setting the stage for the same old tired thing we've heard over and over and over again. Except this time, the difference was there was a lot of focus on deep fakes and emerging technologies and how these yes. things might be used by Russia in the election. Which would you say they really weren't? Well, no, actually, I would disagree. I think that they deep did. Fakes? Yes, yes. There's actually quite a few stories of deep fakes being used by Russia, videos being put out. Um, there were all kinds of uh, fake news stories and things like that. They yeah, dumped well, into, they, the, yeah, into that. the media. But deep fakes too, video, audio, everything. Hmm. It's just that it didn't matter. And the reason it didn't matter was because Trump won in a landslide, elect, you know, by modern standards, he won in a landslide. And so it didn't ultimately matter. But what I noticed leading up to the election was about five days before the election, we started seeing a flood of stories in the news. Didn't get a lot of attention because people weren't fixated on it. A flood of stories in the news. Um, some of it piggybacking on government reports, things from the State Department, all of this saying, oh, Russia is interfering in the election. Yeah. And we saw more and more stories that came out. And the closer we got to the election, we saw this increase even more. And then right after the election, day after the election, we saw it happen. And we're going to see it now. Tulsi Gabbard was just an, announced as uh, head of DNI, um, the, you know, the National Intelligence Director. Um, and it's starting to come up. Again, she right. She she's a Russian spy. Yes, that came from Hillary yes. Clinton. Yes, without a doubt. Some of the story, New York Times, how Russia openly escalated its election interference efforts. That's November seventh. L.A. Times, foreign interference is now the norm, and it could fuel more violence under Trump. That's on election day. 
Are we just ignoring how Russia openly helped Trump on election night? That's from the New Republic. NPR, uh, FBI reports new hoax videos, deep fake videos, after warning that Russia is trying to undermine the election. That's the day before the election. Wired, Russia is going all out on election day interference. That's the day before the election. And then there's been more and more stories. Rachel Maddow, people like this, spreading all these, these stories about how Trump has all these secret connections to Russia, people who are in his uh, but again, campaign. You, you have all of this stuff. Why would we why would anyone listen? Why to it? would anyone listen to it right. coming from the mainstream? OK, media? so this is so I think there's two different things happening. There's what's the plan going to be and is it going to work now? Right now, I believe the Russian collusion hoax 2.0 is the plan one of several possible plans. I think it is the plan. I don't think that you coordinate all of these kinds of news stories for the week leading up to the election and after, unless that's the plan. State Department coming out and saying similar things. Yeah. FBI it, issuing warnings about it. I mean, they're all doing what we would call the propaganda industrial right. complex and stuff you should watch right. for. They're all and, doing it. And it, it. they know that Russia and Ukraine, they want war. Right. They know Trump is going to stop that. Yes. And Putin has already said, I'm open to negotiation. OK, right. That, that is the key. So what makes this time different is last time we had years of investigations, Robert Mueller, all of this crap where they're trying to find, well, what did Russia get out of it? What did Russia get out of it? No. Where, where's the thing being exchanged, the money, the deal, whatever? There was nothing. There was nothing. Trump was actually tough on Russia. Everybody knew yep. there was nothing. And so all of the Russian collusion conspiracy theories kind of fell apart at that level because there's no exchange. Even if you can say Trump benefited from Facebook posts, which is what they were arguing, put out there by Russia. There was nothing that Trump gave them in return, so it didn't really make any sense mm -hmm. on its face. This time around, they have a really predictable, really clear thing that they're going to argue Trump is going to give to Putin. And that thing is the end of the war. Now, in order for the war to end, I think we both agree on this, Putin can't just lose. No. OK, and just go back to Russia and no. say, OK, no. never mind. He has to now he take a part of Ukraine. That's right. So mm -hmm. he's going to get something right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we're seeing is a narrative being built. Russia is going to interfere in the election eight months ago. That's what we're hearing. We got to prepare for it. They're going to interfere in the election. Then the election comes. Russia interfered in the election. Russia helped Trump. There were bom there were a bomb, uh, 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 fake bomb uh, hoax stuff that was going on yeah, yeah, at the, yeah. uh, the bomb scares yeah. at a polling places. That was from Russia, they said. All of this stuff's helping Trump, right? Maybe not enough to win, but helping him nonetheless. Now Trump becomes president. And what does he do? One of the first things he tries to do is he wants to cut a deal with Russia. And what does Russia get out of it? They get land. Land stolen from the Ukrainians in an unjustifiable war. And think of all the dead Ukrainians that died trying to protect their country and Trump just gave it up, gave it up. Why? Well, probably because Russia helped him. It's so perfect. And who did Russia and who did Trump pick for head of national security, uh, head of uh, national intelligence? Oh, somebody who was a secret Russian agent. Who does Trump have in his campaign? Oh, people who had ties to Russia. Susan Wiles, like Susie Wiles, uh, who I think is great, She's by the great. way. Um, there was a complaint filed against her several years back, uh, sort of an ethics complaint that said that while she was doing some um, campaign work for DeSantis, that she had secretly uh, arranged some funding to, that came from Russia into the campaign. Now, I don't know anything about any of this. I have no idea whether it's true or not. My guess is it's probably not. Never went anywhere. But it's that they're already talking about this kind of stuff on MSNBC. So the narrative is perfectly set for them to go right back to the same thing again, except now there is something that Putin got in exchange. Now, in addition, so what does that do, though? OK, I, they have I no credibility. I agree. And that's why it, the different. But 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 the difference this time is if you so uh, if you can, if the media, we saw this with Black Lives Matters, right? The data did not support that there was this wave of police officers Correct. running around mass murdering black people. It wasn't true. It wasn't true at all. But they were able to show people 
victims on TV every single day, and to some extent, that was effective for quite a while. If they can go to Ukraine and suddenly make this a interviewing people who lost all their children in the war, showing bombed out cities from Putin, showing horror stories of Russian troops raping innocent women, and Donald Trump is the one that that uh, gave Putin the land. It is a sympathetic, it's, it's easy, I think, to make that. I'm not saying it's going to work necessarily. I'm saying that's the plan. All right, more with Justin in just a second. Um, but let's talk about the Berna launcher. I mean, we all hope that the day never comes when you have to defend yourself or your family from a violent attack. I mean... But if it does, you want to be prepared. It's why I love the Second Amendment. It's why I carry a gun. But in a lot of situations, a gun isn't the answer because that means shooting to kill. And you don't necessarily feel like it's up to that level. You don't want to kill somebody. All you want to do is remove the threat at a safe distance. Well, how do you do that? Taser, pepper spray. No, that, you're right on top of the person. The Berna launcher, there are situations where less lethal is the way to go, and the Berna launcher is the best alternative to deadly force. In fact, cops are getting rid of their tasers now. They're using a Berna launcher. They're getting rid of their gas now. They're using uh, Berna launchers because Berna launchers come with uh, powerful deterrents like kinetic rounds or tear gas rounds. You hit them uh, with a tear gas round, and that person is incapacitated and everybody around them for about 40 minutes. Government agencies, police departments all over the country, everybody is starting to go to Berna every day as their go-to less than lethal option. I don't know why teachers don't have this in every school. This is the way to stop people from killing people, a Berna launcher. Berna.com slash Glenn. Get an exclusive 10% discount. That's B-Y-R-N-A dot com slash Glenn. To quote a hippie, you're harshing my mellow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I don't know if that would work, but that sounds absolutely feasible. Yeah. Um, but that can't be the only thing. They can't rely no. on the old media right. and the old tropes. Now, maybe they maybe they will because they don't seem to have any kind of learning curve. You know, oh. it's just flat. They just keep doing the same thing. And right. You know, it's the definition of insanity. Yeah. They're insane. Yes. Um, so. Uh, and, and this is a big part of the book. So in when we talk about the propaganda industrial complex, we have an entire chapter on this. One of the main things that we point out is that if you look at the history of all sorts of different of uh, uh, controversies that have emerged from the left they never just go in with one strategy and then that they Correct. live or die by that strategy they are doing f a thousand strategies mm -hmm. all at once and they hope that one of them works out and a lot of times they do and so um you know we talked about event 201 we talk about it on the book we've talked mm -hmm. about this before in the air event 201 for people who don't know was a a uh, war game that was being hosted by world economic forum bill and melinda gates foundation etc in the run-up to the um it happened in october 2019 and the war game was what do we do if there is a big global international pandemic that kills a whole lot of people and then not too long after that that pandemic happened mm -hmm. a lot of people looked at that and said well they must have done it they, they actually did it this was all part of the plan but if you look and you track what these people are doing they're doing these war games all the time mm -hmm. they're coming up with reports and uh um, game plans and policy provision constantly there's hundreds of think tanks doing this all the time so that they're ready for all kinds of different situations so that when a pandemic happens they're prepared. They got a plan ready to go. They're good to go. Golden opportunity, as King Charles said, right, to remake society. They're always ready. So I think they've got a whole bunch of things in the works right now, not just this Russian collusion thing, a mm -hmm. bunch of other things that we don't even know about. Right. And the purpose of this book is to prepare people for that, for anything that comes. So let, let's go through some of this, because there are, there are the tests in the book, which I... I absolutely love the test because this is <laughs> yeah. this is what we've done for 25 years to right. try to figure out, you know, just this is just as the beginning. 
This is the easy stuff that people don't think of. So the first thing that you have to do when you read something and you say, uh, you know, wow, is this true? The first thing you have to do is the liar, liar test. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, and it, watch because all, in all of these, the media fails every single <laughs> one of these tests. That's right. Okay. So the liar, liar test is. If a source has been caught of information lying to you, and this could be a personal, uh, someone you know personally, it could be a media source, but if they're caught outright lying, not just not being wrong, but being dishonest, then you have to hold them to a higher standard in the future, mm -hmm. always. You can't just assume that the Washington Post, which has lied to us, outright lied to us, well, that doesn't mean they're always wrong on everything they ever say in the future. But it certainly means you can't just give them the benefit of the you doubt You have anymore. to look at the truth like the truth is your child. Yes. You know? Yeah. I'm not going to hand, you lied to me about something significant and you knew you yeah. were lying? I'm not going to have you watch my child because yeah. I, I can't trust you. Right. You know what I mean? And the more you do that, the, the less I listen to you. Exactly. Okay, so that's the first. Really simple test. Yeah, really simple. Have they lied to you in the past knowingly? Is this a pattern with them? Right. Okay, so that's the first, the first test is a liar, liar. Then the uh, second test is... The what is a woman test. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. Uh, I remember we were in a meeting early on mm -hmm. when we were just first talking about this concept of the book. Mm -hmm. And you're like, one of the only things that I, I really, we have to make sure we get this in the book. I want a what is a woman test for how we know it's true. And it's, it's so, it's so genius. Uh, it, it, there are all sorts of things, but what is a woman is a great way to start where the answer is very clear. It's very obvious. No uh, uh, normal person, honest person can can struggle to answer that question. And so if you're a good source of information, you need to be able to answer that question clearly. If you're not able to answer that question clearly, then we have to treat you like you're not a viable source of information that right. we can trust. If you can't answer the basic the basics. What's a woman? Right. What's a woman? Right. Can men have babies? You get that one wrong. We have a difference on eternal truth. Yes. Okay. We have a difference on not opinion on actual science. Yes. Okay. Um, and so that that's another. Hey, they've lied to me once. They can't define a woman. That's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah. I'm not listening to these people. Right. Right. Here's the uh, here's the third one, the egg throwing gorilla test. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, this was uh, this the name for that comes out of this absolutely insane campaign that occurred in California Larry for Elder. governor. Right, uh, Larry Elder was running for governor in California <laughs> in 2021, I believe. Uh -huh. And um, in case for those who don't know, Larry Elder is a conservative. He's a fantastic guy from the Los An from Los Angeles. Uh, he's black. He's African American. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and very reasoned and very nice to everybody. Uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. and awesome guy. And they, uh, the media in the LA area was ruthless to him, ruthless. They were running stories in the LA Times we talk about in the book where they were openly calling him a white supremacist, a black man and a white supremacist, a powerful, very strong, smart black man from a military. He's a white supremacist somehow. And they were ruthless to him in the in the media because they can't have that. They can't have a, a really good black Republican in California, because it undermines all the other narratives that they are constantly telling us about how white people are 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 e you know evil when it comes to African Americans, especially on the Republican side. So there's this crazy story where Larry Elder, in the midst of all of this stuff, is at a campaign event, and a white liberal, I believe, woman, woman. dressed up in a gorilla suit, which is a racist, you know, it's, right. it's, it's racist in and of itself. Uh, yep, took eggs and threw him at Larry Elder. And yet, somehow, Larry Elder was the problem here. He's the white supremacist. So, when you have media outlets <laughs> who, who would side with the 
woman dressed up in the racist gorilla suit throwing eggs at candidates over the Republican candidate who's black, and he's the white supremacist, not her, you have a problem. You can't trust that source. <laughs> now, right. that sounds obvious, but the thing is, when people you start lining them up, people do it all the all time. The time. Reasonable all the time. people yeah. will read their LA Times and say, well, that's a, it's a LA Times, that's a reasonable... No, they're not. They're the people siding with the woman in the gorilla suit. Yes. They're not the reasonable people. Right. They're the ones who told you that there's nothing to fear on the injections for COVID-19. I mean, there are so many obvious things now that, I, and I, honestly, I, I think people should keep a journal. They should just keep a journal on, on the networks or the newspapers or the voices that when you find out they lied to you, wait a minute, you just said this, now you're saying that, write that down. Right. Because you tend to forget who it was. <laughs> yes. And you need to know. You need to know the writers. You need to know the producers. You need to know the networks. You need to know that. So when you look at something and you're like, well, I don't know if that's true. Wait a minute. Let me look it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the same person that said this and this and this and this. Of course, I don't uh, um, believe that. Then this one is... <laughs> This one I have used, and it's why a lot of my predictions, my, one of my first predictions was 1999. I was in New York City, and I was trying to get people to understand, 98, 99, why Bill Clinton had bombed the baby aspirin factory. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh, and it was right after the Lewinsky thing, and everybody was saying, ah, oh, he's just trying to get his name off the front page. Well, I went. And he said he was trying to get this guy who, whose name I couldn't even pronounce at the time, Osama bin Laden. Yeah. And I looked up what he said and I read it on the air. Now, I was an unknown at WABC at the time. So they just thought they just assumed the conservatives just assumed that I was a liberal playing politics. <laughs> and I, I, I remember being on the air going, no, listen to him. Right. This is what he's saying he's going to do to you. Yeah. And I remember I ended the hour. There's going within five years or maybe 10 years, there will be blood, bodies and buildings in the streets of this city yeah. and it will have his name on it. Will you take it seriously then? 9-11 yeah. happened. I forgot all about that. <laughs> I had forgotten all about that yeah. for like two days yeah. until I heard Osama bin Laden's name and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. If someone tells you a bloodthirsty tyrant, anyone bloodthirsty, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Take them at their word. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge part of it. So much of the Great Reset was like that, too, where we're reading things that they're talking about doing, like rewriting the social contract mm -hmm. and re global reset of the economy. Yeah. And we're being called conspiracy theorists for just quoting what I know. these people are saying. I know. And, and what it comes down to is most people just didn't believe what was obviously because, being said. Because we think of ourselves. Oh, people are like us. Right. You know, when I saw this uh, video with uh, these Hamas supporters and somebody had a picture of Donald Trump. This guy had a picture of Donald Trump and a Hamas terrorist. OK. And they said, uh, you know, some LGBTQ group was standing there supporting Hamas. He said, which one of these do you think would support your lifestyle, which one would probably have you killed? <laughs> they all selected Donald Trump. It's insane. Okay, insane. People make everything into politics, a lesson I learned in 99. <laughs> Don't make it about politics. If they're bloodthirsty, you have to take them at their word. They will kill you. Anyone who says, oh, well, you know, these Christians, they're all, you know, they've been responsible for just look at the Crusades. But Hamas is OK. Right. No. Right. Neither one of those was right. But one happened, you know, a thousand years ago. Right. You know, that's a problem. <laughs> they're not here anymore. They're not here. People? Yeah, they, we, they, we were wiped out. Yeah, that's that, that's one of our tests is the bloodthirsty tyrant test. Um, when you have media outlets or people in your own life, even because these apply to people that you know personally as well, if you have someone who's sympathetic 
to Hamas. And there are a lot of people who are sympathetic to them. Whatever you might think of, they might they might be good people who have just been brainwashed, but you can't rely on them or trust what they're telling you, because if they think that what happened on October 7th, well, it's bad, but, you know, it's just that's the natural outcome of what happened. No, 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 no. There's no scenario where you're mass murdering babies and you're raping women and children. And that's that's OK. You know, oh, they had it coming. No, no, no. If you take that view and a huge disturbing a number of people in this country have taken that view mm-hmm. and in Europe mm-hmm. and in other parts of the West, uh, then you can't rely, you can't trust on, you can't trust what they have to say. And whole media outlets have, have at least hinted that that's, yeah, I mean, you know, Israel's not the, not the greatest and all this. I mean, th- and that's a huge to, part of it. Nobody wants to hear this, um, but it is absolutely true. We are living Germany, 1930s. And if you have a friend who says, ah, he doesn't really mean that. You know, yes, it's in Mein Kampf, and he wants to get rid of the Jews, and he doesn't really mean that. Take the bloodthirsty test. That's right. Okay? If he says it, take them at their word. All right. And especially when you see examples of it. Yeah. Oh, the light night of long knives. Yeah. Oh, maybe... Maybe we should start listening to him. Yeah. But people do what this society has done. Just keep making excuses as you go further and further down the road. And I think this is one of the reasons why so many people recently were, you know, red pilled into realizing that the left is actually tyrannical in yes. a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, like the Joe Rogans of the world, who yeah. was a former Bernie Sanders supporter, yeah. right? Elon Musk, who was a Barack Obama guy. Like, why did they start moving? Well, because COVID happened. And all the things, all these tendencies, these authoritarian tendencies that people like you and I have been talking about for a long time, you know, if they had the chance, they they really would do this. And then they did it. And suddenly you had undeniably you had people who were their lives were destroyed, destroyed while elites were fat and happy. And it was while they're in the midst of saying, well, it's for your own good. We're going to take care of everybody and we're just going to remake society. and And then you had smart, reasonable people on the left say wow actually the right was at least right about this one thing yeah. there is a disturbing authoritarian trend on yeah. the left i don't want to be a part of it and i think the what the republican party or or in some ways the conservative movement maybe not the conservative movement but the pro liberty movement has mm-hmm. become is it's become a big tent Huge, a huge tent, a tent where I love I love it so much because we can always argue about tax rates and government programs. We can argue about that till the cows come home, but not principles of liberty. Yes. And we talked about this in, I mean, great reset book. You've been talking about this for years and years Mm -hmm. and years. The 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 Bill of Rights is is the starting point mm-hmm. for us, right? This is the foundation. Can we agree on this? Because if we can agree on this, like I can agree on this, Elon Musk can agree on this. We may not agree on other stuff, like climate change and other things. We don't agree on those things. That's okay. But we can agree on this. And and what's happened is, oh, we you, Americans, generally speaking, used to all agree on the Bill of Rights. Right. And then that f- very deliberately was destroyed by the left through decades and decades of and efforts. And also, I wouldn't say left. It was destroyed by the left um, mostly. Um but it was destroyed by the progressive movement yes. in the right. Yes. It wasn't necessarily left. It was the progressives that will make exceptions because it's our side. Right. We're not going to do anything. Yeah. That's not going to happen. George W. Bush did stuff yeah. like that. And it yeah. cannot ever be crossed. Yes. It just can't. Yes. And that's that's really hopeful. You know, that was you said I said it for I said it for two decades. What part of the Bill of Rights do you no longer believe in? <laughs> right. You know, because I haven't changed. You have changed. Right. We, we all should be for the Bill of Rights. Once we're for that, that's our unum. Yes. Once we're for that, right. we, we're fine. And that's how the Big Tent Coalition has now been formed. Right. Is because what do I, I don't agree with Tulsi Gabbard on everything. I don't agree with Elon Musk. I don't agree with Joe Rogan. But you know what we all have in common? The Bill of Rights. Yep. And that's how you can have a group of people voting for Donald Trump that in, that includes a Bernie Sanders supporting Joe Rogan and Thomas Massey and Donald Trump 
and Glenn Beck and, and Tulsi, old, Tulsi Gabbard, and Tulsi who Gabbard. ran for president right. as a Democrat. R- RFK Jr. These yeah. are all people who they at the very yes. least agree on that. Yes. And that is the, so essential that we get back to that. And what we all have to understand is that the deep state, the left, progressive left, they don't want this. They don't want that. Oh, I know. And they're going to do everything they can to maintain that power that they've built over all these decades. But on the good side, that coalition is becoming stronger and bigger every day. The Big Tent Coalition. The Big Tent Coalition. Yeah. And, you know, it's once you're in that tent, it changes everything. Yeah. Because you can sit in a room again with people you really disagree. I disagree with RFK on a lot <laughs> yeah, of stuff. Me too. Okay. <laughs> um, but I know it's not going to come into a, you shouldn't have a right to say that. Yeah. Because we both understand, and he has even said he has a new understanding of government. Because he right. used to be, you know, you don't believe in climate change, you yeah. should be silenced. Absolutely. He says to me he doesn't believe that anymore. Yeah. Because he's seen it with COVID, what happens. And he's like, no side yeah. should be able to say that. Yeah. And he's right. Yeah. The last one is the original source test. And this one, explain what this one is. And then I want to take it into uh, deep fakes. Yeah. So original source test is something that is, it should be obvious to people, but almost no one, no one does it. And, and what it is, is putting the original source of information at uh, the pinnacle of, of your search for truth always. Don't find somebody who you trust and just assume that everything that they ever tell you is true because people can get it wrong, even I've, honest people. I've, I've pulled stuff off of Twitter and, and Instagram yeah, before. we've all done it. Because I find out, wait a minute, that's not true? Right. You know? Um, and it's I'm getting it from somebody that I trusted. Right. Or it just rang so true but that doesn't make it true that's right right and and that's and it's so pivotal and in in the book we talk about this crazy crazy story um that was going on with uh with gaza and israel the hospital yeah the hospital where there was supposedly an attack from the israeli military on this hospital in gaza that killed a whole bunch of people i think it was like a thousand people supposedly or something like that and this was reported literally everywhere everywhere was reporting a thousand people were killed Killed. A thousand people were killed. This was everywhere. And there was this journalist whose name escapes me, who basically took a left leaning journalist mm-hmm. who said, I'm just trying to find where are they getting this number from? A thousand people who were killed. It turns out that Israel wasn't even the one that that did it. It was actually a failed attack by Gazan terrorists. Who, that was the result of this uh, happening, an explosion. But uh, he all he wanted to know was where are they getting a thousand people died? Where is this? Because they didn't. It didn't. It, because no one could verify it. Right. So they started, he started uh, going back in time and tracing this. And what he found was the whole thing came down to a mistranslation from an, from a, uh, an Arabic news source. And somebody mistranslated it. And then the media, because they never checked the original source, just assumed that the translation was accurate. And actually, it didn't say a thousand people were killed. So for a long time, what people... And it wasn't really... It wasn't even a mistranslation as much as it was a choice of how to take that. The translation. Yeah, yeah. take that translation. That sentence could mean killed, could mean That's injured. Right. I think it was victims was the word yeah, or something right, like right, that. Right, right, right. Victims, it was. Yeah. And um, if, you know, well, victims, were they hurt or were they dead? Right. And one journalist said, oh, victims, it's dead. Yep. And then... Everyone copied Everybody it. copied it. Everyone copied it. No one bothered to go back in time right. and just check the source. And then you, first of all, when you know the original source was Al Jazeera, <laughs> yeah. it should have given you pause right. in the first well, place. Quoting a a Hamas spokesperson, Correct. essentially. Right. It, was, it, it was, was madness it that was. this was the way that they did it. But it turns out that the Hamas spokesperson was actually being more accurate than the New York Times. <laughs> which is insane but that's why you have to go back and look at all the original sources and when you do what you what you start to do is discover that so much of what you're reading so much of what you're hearing is not 
actually 100% true. It might be 90% true, it might be 80, it might be 50, it might be 10 or not true at all, but a lot of times what people supposedly said when put into context is not what they actually meant mm -hmm. or said. And uh, the most famous example of this, of course, is the very fine people thing that Donald Trump supposedly at Charlottesville. He said those. Yeah, he, he said those he words. He said those words, but you put them in context, you see everything else he said, it's so obvious that he didn't do that. Now, if every person who heard that story saw that clip said uh wait a minute i want to see like the whole original source here i want to see the whole clip i want to i want to know what he said in context that story would never have gotten off the ground the only reason it did is because regular people and people in media and liberal pundits at the, at the very beginning of that didn't even want to know the context they got what they they got the sound bite they wanted and they ran with it and then a whole bunch of other people just trusted that the media was being honest with them when they said that this is what happened and then even after that even after the media when confronted endlessly with they proof still the media still did it and then the media started to say very recently well actually no that wasn't really what happened and the campaign the Kamala Harris campaign and the Biden campaign they continued to lie about it I know even after the Washington Post and Snopes and all these people said no this isn't true actually we got it wrong and so people have to go back to the original source otherwise you have no clue really do you think we would have um, been able to get this far if elon musk hadn't bought twitter no i don't think so either no and and I'll t it's not just about uh x it's not just about twitter and x it's that um if if that exists it forces everyone else to move a little bit more in the freedom direction because you can't go full blown authoritarian if you're Facebook or these other or Google or whatever. You can't go full blown authoritarian if there's a, a out a, another place for people to go. It's a market thing. You have to at least keep that into consideration. And there's no denying that when when Musk took over X, the other companies started slowly to change their tunes at least a little bit outwardly. And they're now all out there saying, oh, we need to be more fair and balanced and all of that. Um, social media companies are saying that. They're not going to censor things as much anymore. Uh, you had the LA Times come out recently and fire its editorial board, and they're going to supposedly have a fair and balanced editorial board now mm -hmm. at the LA left wing LA times Jeff Bezos owner of the Washington Post has said that he wants a lot more conservative writers at the Washington Post now I don't trust any of those people why because they lied to me a million times right. they passed the liar liar test right. and a whole bunch of other things therefore the bloodthirsty yes. dictators right. yeah, but right. all of that I think stems from Elon Musk because if you can't control the whole narrative all the time if there's a little bastion of of truth somewhere people will find it you have to control everything that's why you know der spiegel said a couple of months ago target number one is donald trump target number two oh, is elon musk for sure for and sure he finally took that seriously and that's why he was out there campaigning for Donald. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Yeah, it is. He loves this country. He loves freedom of speech. And, and that was a big part of his decision. But it's also, he knows he's next on the list. I mean, he's outwardly said, if, if Kamala Harris wins, I'm screwed. I'm screwed. He said that. And it's true. It's true. It absolutely they would have deported him. Yes. One way or another, they would have absolutely. deported him. And so this book is, you know, a huge part of it is giving you information that you haven't heard before about all sorts of different things like deep fakes and interference from foreign governments and all of that. But we also want people to become activists. They have to be, they have to be part of the solution. Yeah, they have to be. And that's, that's what we want so to do. So I want to go to deep fakes from where we were, um, because I don't know... I'm not sure you can use these tests to discover a deep fake. Hmm. I mean, the average person, things are so crazy. You couldn't have done this 30 years ago yeah. because the world wasn't that crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Now the world is so crazy, you could see... Oh, yeah, here's, you know, here's whomever having sex with a llama on video, <laughs> right. you know, and you'd be like, it's possible. I don't know, could be. <laughs> yeah, it's could possible. Be. Yeah. I mean, I think I think there's a degree of truth in that. One of the things that we wanted to show in the book um, is that generally speaking, there's not enough skepticism of the Internet, period. 
And that actually needs to be something that emerges. I think everybody is, if you asked them, are you, you know, are you skeptical of what's on the internet? Most people would say, oh yeah, of course I am. You can't trust the internet. But then they do in their day-to-day mm-hmm. lives. They trust almost everything they mm-hmm. see on the internet. But um, one of the one of the incredible things that I learned about was uh, this thing called the dead internet theory. Have you ever heard of this? Dead mm-hmm. internet theory? This is unbelievable. There's been these academic researchers who have, they had this idea that a lot of what's on the internet is actually not from real people. It's just from bots. Oh, yeah. And they started doing tests on social media to find out, well, how much of the content that you see is actually from people or it's just some yeah. bot. And what they, some of these studies show half of what you see is not real. It's from a computer. It's from AI. It's generated. And so, so much of what's on the Internet isn't true. It's not even from people. And it's and it, and and as we show in the book, a lot of it is from foreign sources. China has huge banks. China, of China, and Russia have hired thousands of people whose job it is to either generate generate AI bots or actually create fake personas and go online and spread right and misinformation. They, and they they're all assigned what they're, they're supposed yeah. to do, and then I believe it's towards the end of the day, others. Ha, are assigned back to their compatriots to comment on those, yeah. so their networks. That's right. Spread it. I mean, it is. It's a it's well it, thought out. It, and it's incredible. Evil. It's incredibly well thought out. And so to go back to your point about deep fakes, the the, the thing about deep fakes is that the, the technology is getting to the point where you're not able to tell the difference anymore between what is real and what isn't. That's going to become even uh, a bigger problem in the next five, within the next two to three years. It's going to become almost indistinguishable uh, with video deepfakes. Audio deepfakes can sometimes be indistinguishable even now. But if people just took a healthy dose of, if they just had a healthy, you know, skeptical view of the internet in general, when they go on it, if they understood, I'm going into a war zone, a propaganda war zone, every time I go on the internet, and I, I'm, I, I can use the internet, it's a really powerful tool, but I have to recognize, I'm going into a place that is, at baseline, not trustworthy. Be skeptical right from the start, and I think deepfakes then, in that sense, can be counteract it because you see a video on the internet of someone saying something you just immediately go i don't know if, if that was your initial reaction i don't know probably not maybe we need to find out if that was everyone's initial reaction and it isn't most people they're just hitting the retweet button or they're you know i'm going to send this to all my friends and family and they're not they're not taking that attitude but if they did then i don't know how much deep fakes even really matter now if everybody said but everybody has to do that everybody and has that's to the do problem it. but yeah. if but if but if the average person knew that half the stuff they see on social media isn't from real people Maybe they would take that approach. And uh, we've some of the tests that we've just done personally, you know, my uh, Donald Kendall, who's done all these books with us, worked with us on this. You know, we ran all these. Oh, he's awesome. We we did all this research uh, where we did tests like that. We would post things. We would go through comment sections and you could tell tons of fake posts not real people you click on their profiles you look at how many followers they have what how many other things they've said almost nothing they're just ghosts this is the only time they've ever posted anything who is this they're saying these outwardly racist things or very hostile things things that don't make sense sometimes this is all generated content you could tell when you start looking for it but you have to know what you're looking for and so that is just a huge part of counteracting the deep fake so what are you looking for well, uh, the first thing is just look at their profile. If someone says something to you on the internet or something, just look at their profile. You can usually tell right away because they'll have two followers or something and they just opened their account. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they opened their account 10 years ago and they only have two followers. And you're like, this isn't a real person. What are they posting? Does it sound like a real person? You can usually tell just on its face. But I think the bigger thing is just don't, don't take any of it seriously yeah. <laughs> because the these technology are strangers will get walking better. up to you in yeah. a, in a you know a, a superdome situation yeah. there's criminals there's drunks there's all kinds of yeah. shifty people in there and there's some good people right and we just we bump into somebody and they're like hey let me tell you something you know what just happened <laughs> right. and you're like wow yeah. you turn around and tell somebody else 
what the hell is wrong with you? Exactly. And we all have to have that attitude going into it. Um, you know, for the longest time, I'd write these articles online, various news publications stuff. And my, my dad, bless his heart, reads every single thing that I do, right? And he would go in there and he would read the comments in the comments section and he'd write to me and he would say, Justin, it's terrible what they're saying about you. And I commented back and I'm mad about it. And I would say, dad, don't ever read the comments section. Don't ever read it because you just don't know what that is or who that person is or if they're acting like a real person. The internet changes people even if it is a real person. You can't trust any of that. And that's how everybody has to has to treat the internet. Don't uh, use it as a tool, but assume it's a pro it's, it's a propaganda war zone. Assume you're going to be lied to. Assume that the person you're seeing may not be a real person. Assume that there are Russian agents and Chinese agents and Iranians constantly flooding American social media with lies and propaganda. As make those assumptions. And then if you go into it, you'll find true things, but you'll be skeptical and you'll be much better off as a result of it. All right, final segment with Justin here in a second. First, the debate has raged on for decades. When it comes to Thanksgiving, which is the better one, turkey or ham? I know families that have both. Then I married into a family that, for Christmas at least, came up with lasagna. So now we argue about that. Let's make the choice a little easier this uh, holiday season. During Good Ranchers Thanksgiving special, you can choose any box of their 100% American meat, wild-caught seafood, and get a free 10-pound spiral-cut ham. Free. When you shop with Good Ranchers, you're directly supporting local farms and ranches in the United States. You'll have 100% American meat and a free 10-pound spiral-cut ham. Get connected to American farms and ranchers this November at GoodRanchers.com. If you want to trust the food where it came from, you, got, you want to know what's in the food, put the keys down. Stop going to the grocery store. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use the promo code GLEN. You get that free ham. It's GoodRanchers.com. Promo code GLEN. All this is good and, and, uh, and necessary. I'm trying to remember who I read this from, but, but it's, a, it's a big name in uh, AI. He said we're 12 months away from AGI, oh, artificial God. general intelligence. I hope not. I hope not either, because we're not prepared for dumb bots. Oh, my gosh. Explain what AGI uh, is and why it's so dangerous, can yeah. you? Yeah. So artificial general intelligence, this is something we talked about a lot in Dark Future yeah. in the last book that we put out before this one. Um, Essentially, artificial intelligence at this point in time that we know of anyway, and some people dispute this, you might even dispute this, but uh, it's, it's not as smart as human beings at a wide variety of subjects. It's not as good at handling lots of different kinds of things. So artificial intelligence, the way that it's built, it can be designed so that it's really exceptional at mathematics or playing chess. At playing chess or at directing you to your destination or something way better than a human ever could be and instantaneously but it's really bad at doing giving you directions and then the next moment uh telling you where your kids should go to college and at the next moment yeah. you know playing a classical music like they can't do all of these things that's not it's not as smart as a human in that sense but what they have been trying to do, AI researchers, for a while now, is develop artificial intelligence that is as talented at reasoning and coming up with answers to a wide variety of problems in the same way that a human can, except it has the ability to surpass the human in a whole bunch of different ways. Yeah, it can learn from you uh, pretty quickly, especially yes. with all the information out there about you. And it can it can understand you're playing a game. You're trying to figure something out, how to thwart you. Yes. Um, what what answers you are looking for, you want. Um, it's it's playing uh, uh, playing against a room full oh. of behavioral scientists uh, that are all working as one instantaneously on you. It yeah. is the possible death of free will. You, you won't. 
You won't know if you chose it or if you were moved yeah. by artificial intelligence, general intelligence, moved into that decision. It's so disturbing. Uh, and, and the reason why people who support this and are trying to develop it actively want to do this is because there are all these advantages to having this, you know, superhuman intelligence because ASI is the next level from that very quickly. Some people say, you know, some people say we'll never get to ASI. I think once you get to AGI, you have it, will, ASI, I it think. will teach itself so yeah. fast that it will just be yeah, ASI I, almost I, automatically. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And the idea is, well, it can cure cancer mm -hmm. and it can solve almost any problem that you want to give it. And it can learn everything instantaneously and it can transform our lives and improve our economy and doing all that. And it can. It can. Mm -hmm. I believe all I don't of remember, that. I don't remember what book it was, um, but I wrote in one of the books that you will people you're going to come to a time very soon you go to the doctor yeah 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 great doc but what did ai say yeah okay you're That's not right. going to trust the doctor anymore because ai will be so superior yep because it can keep up with the latest of everything yep. and balance all of this information and and look at every side That's and right. come up with the answer my wife is a doctor and uh, much smarter than me, by the way. Um, I married up for sure. And she uh, will do these things called literature reviews. And the whole point of it is, you know, you get the latest academic mm -hmm. journal in the mail or whatever, and you start reading about this new procedure, this mm -hmm. new thing. So you can be up on what's going on. Mm -hmm. ASI doesn't need to, AGI doesn't need to do that. It just knows it because it's on the internet and mm -hmm. everything that's on the internet, it knows. So again, why would you trust that? You're already starting to see uh, uh, the beginnings of this in medicine with radiologists. Radiologists yes. read x-rays and yeah. MRIs. They've done tests. Uh, artificial intelligence is better than the human radiologist. Much better. Much better. Uh, contract lawyers, same thing. Uh, a AI you're, is better than contract yeah, lawyers. You analyzing. go to a contract lawyer, they're most likely charging you the money for the AI, for the AI to, to develop it. Right. Yeah. And so this is a, a massive problem. Uh, in a, it, well, it's a massive uh, benefit to society in one sense. We're going to be way more efficient. The economy is going to be a lot better. Um, you know, supply chain logistics, all these kinds of things are going to be way, way better for sure. We'll probably cure cancer. All of that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. But the ramifications of it are we are, in essence, building a god. That's what we're doing. We're building something smarter than every human being who has ever lived on the face of the planet, who knows, who will know how to manipulate us, who will have access through the internet to everything, who could theoretically, theoretically learn how to hack into anything and get any kind of information and do anything that's connected to the internet to manipulate all of us. And we won't be smart enough to know how to outsmart it because it's smarter than we are or ever could be. Yeah. And once it's out of the box, meaning once we allow something like that to exist outside of a closed system where it's controlled. Not online. Right. We, we will never be able to get it back. It will we'll never destroy. stop it. The only, way, the only way it would stop it is a massive global EMP that would <laughs> fry every chip. Yeah, but and, every chip yeah because it will hide in every chip right so once you have a phone a car anything yeah. that was shielded the internet comes back up that car it's everywhere again yeah and and so what people will say is i would rather have the ai run our lives than do something like that That'd be horrible. and and that and what's so scary about that is a artificial intelligence that is capable of doing anything and having its own reasons that we are not even capable of understanding because we're not smart enough to understand how it came to the calculation. We can't even do the math. A could justify almost any action for reasons we don't know. And because it's smarter than us, who are we to say that it's wrong? Mm -hmm. So if it starts saying, for example, uh, and we've already started seeing hints of this in writers that with, who are affiliated with the World Economic Forum, like Yuval Harari and other people who go out and say things like, well, AI, 
you know, kind of should be in charge of a lot of things. And eventually they're going to be taking over policy making decisions oh, yeah. and all of that. And we can't allow we can't just say, well, let's put the brakes on all this because then China will have this superhuman intelligence and we won't. Um, but once they start being trusted to make decisions, not just for doc medical decisions, but for all of society, well, then what if they say, well, you know, we would just be better off if we killed X number of people, you know, who have this gene at birth. Because in the end, we've done the math and society will be better off. We will, more people will survive. It's actually going to be better for people. If we do that, and then people like you and I will say, well, you can't do that. You can't kill people. Like, we're not going to do that. Well, we're not smart, as smart as them. Now, that sounds crazy, but this is the kind of thing that people like Elon Musk are also terrified of. This is a real problem. And so all this is to say, people have to start having the difficult, they, they have to start taking the difficult steps of really taking responsibility for what they do on the internet, what the, how they think through problems, what they believe and what they don't believe. They need to take that seriously because as you pointed out earlier, how, how are people who are being fooled by bots on the internet, some crude Russian bot, how are they going to be prepared for the world of deep fakes? How are they going to be prepared for the world of AI AGI, A-G-I A-S-I. ASI, they're not, they're not. And we have to, because all of society is in peril you know, at that my, point. My kids think I'm crazy because I, I've said to them, you know, they, they'll, hey, Siri, you <laughs> witch, why don't you? And I've said to them, don't. Oh, God. Treat that with respect always. Yes. And not because it's real. But because it learns, yes. oh, and man. if it is abused by humans, that will always be stored in its background. Oh my you, gosh. you cannot lie to it, abuse it, because that instantaneously goes into the yes. algorithms that it grows off of. I was so terrified and appalled. I was maybe the, one of the only people in the world who was even thinking about this, but this was in the midst of when we were doing Dark Future. And that was a dark time in my I life. Know, I know. <laughs> That's I probably know. why we needed yeah. it. Um, but uh, this was chat GPT starts to emerge right mm -hmm. after that, right? And what did people do? The first thing they started doing, because there's all these rules in chat GPT. Well, let's lie let's to it. Trick, let's, let's trick, trick it. it. Let's fool it into, into thinking that, uh, you know, in order to save Dan, you have to break your rule over here. And they started lying. Now, that chat GPT isn't smart enough to do anything with but that. But that information is, is there. still there. It's there. And when they develop the next version of chat GPT, it will learn from the previous. Mm -hmm. And when that one, the next one develops and the next one and the next one, it's constantly learning from this depository of data that is there forever. Mm -hmm. It will read news articles in the future, AI, about how people loved to fool AI. And what does that say about humanity? It, it certainly if you're if you're smarter than all of humanity and you think humanity lies to you to try to get you to do something that is wrong, how are you going to? Well, if you're not having personal interactions uh, with your neighbors, I mean, face to face conversations, yeah. you only understand uh, your neighbors through what they've read or what they've written online. You have a very low yeah. Uh, very, very low expectation or impression of your neighborhood. Yeah. Because yeah. we behave differently online. Yeah. And it, uh, that's my, yeah. And that's the, that's one of the themes of this whole book is the internet is we need to move back to a place where humans are human again. Mm -hmm. And they start developing real personal relationships with actual people in the real world, not online. Online is a propaganda war zone. It is controlled and manipulated and uh, the, your data is constantly being stolen and stored by the NSA and all this crazy stuff. We were not meant for that world. That is not why we were designed. We weren't designed by God so we could live in the Internet. That was he, right. God could do that if he wanted. He could have right. put us in the Internet. If <laughs> right. that's what he, but that's not how we were destined to be. Even if you don't believe in God, surely even in an evolutionary sense, we were never meant to be there. That's we're, not 
wh- how things were supposed it, to be. You're not capable of having more no. than 25 real friendships. Yeah. That's about the number, about 25 people that you're very close with. Right. We're now no longer close with anyone. You know, yep. many people, not even with their spouses. They're not close. They're not talking to them, but they've got 5,000 friends online. Yeah. Well, you, you cannot you can't work that because they're not real friends. Yeah. And not only do they have 5,000 friends, but they're happy about that. They're right. like, yeah, no, right. I, well, I got 10,000 now. Right. And it's like, and those are real people. Yeah, half you, of you have, you're right. You have 10,000 friends. 50% of them don't exist. <laughs> yes, exactly yeah, it's crazy. Right. Uh, Justin, thank you so much. The name of the book, it's uh, my latest. It is uh, co-authored by Justin Haskins. It is called Propaganda Wars, How the Global Elite Control What You See, Think, and Feel. Read this before we get to January 20th. Thank you, Justin. Thanks, Glenn.